This is the EU today, but it is unlikely to stay that way. The original founders of the EU, often referred to as the Inner Six, want to integrate further, potentially into an EU federation. The other 21 EU members are more likely to support the status quo, rather than integrating further. Then there are 10 countries that want to join the EU, and the wider European community, with whom the EU needs to collaborate to face global crises. Basically, a multi-tiered European Union. Is this where we're heading towards? It wouldn't be a new idea. Macron has spoken of this twice already, suggesting a multi-speed EU in 2017 and a European political community in 2022. So that means more layers to the European project. Great. But how would this work with the entities we have today? Simply put, it will make it even more complicated. Nonetheless, with Ukraine and Moldova becoming EU candidates, EU structural change is necessary to accommodate new members. But before jumping to my conclusions of how the EU could look like in 2030, I will quickly explain the constructs that we have today. And please subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content. Thanks. Let's start with the most obvious, the European Union, a political and economic community of 27 countries. Member states of this union create and adopt EU legislation and have a seat at the table in the European Parliament and the Council. So let's put this into a nice table, to which we will add throughout the video. The most well-known EU entity is probably the single market, which grants its members the four freedoms. Freedom of goods, services, capital and people. All 27 EU member states are part of the single market, and through the European Economic Area Agreement, three more countries can also take part. Not to mention Switzerland, who of course has its own personal treaty. All EU members are required to be part of the single market. Next there's the Eurozone, the EU's monetary union, where countries use the Euro and answer to the European Central Bank. Currently, it has 19 members from the EU and four from non-EU countries. Denmark has secured an opt-out, and the other seven EU countries have agreed to join in the future. Again, all EU members are required to join the Eurozone. Then there's the Schengen area, whose 26 members have abolished passport control so that people can move freely across their mutual borders. Ireland has secured an opt-out, and four EU countries are expected to join the bloc in the future. Not to mention that there are four non-EU states that are also part of the Schengen area. And again, all EU members are obliged to eventually join the area. Then there's the Customs Union, which is EU's trade bloc that allows member states to trade freely with each other without tariffs, quotas or taxes, while having a common external trade agreement with common tariffs for non-EU countries. All EU members are part of this bloc, including four non-EU members. And again, all EU members are obliged to join the Customs Union. Lastly, there's the Council of Europe, a European organization that promotes human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. With its 46 members, it is one of the largest European organizations, including almost every European country. The Council of Europe is a completely different entity than the EU, and almost serves as a prerequisite of EU membership. It is like an EU light, if you will, as human rights, democracy, and rule of law are key entry criteria for EU accession. Therefore, in my opinion, there are already two tiers of European integration. One very weak one, the Council of Europe, that cannot legislate, and one a lot stronger, the European Union, which can legislate. But of course, it is not as black and white as this. For example, Norway, who is a member of the Council of Europe, but not of the European Union. However, Norway is part of the Schengen area and the European Economic Area, and therefore has access to the single market. Once again, emphasizing that some EU entities can be accessed by non-EU members. And obviously there are a lot more European organizations, but for this video, the ones already mentioned are most relevant. Anyway, coming back to our favorite French president, Monsieur Macron, who has suggested that we need another European tier, a European political community. He described it as a forum that would meet multiple times per year to discuss matters of common interest to all of Europe, such as security, energy, transport, infrastructure, and the movement of people. All European countries that share the EU's democratic values could join. For instance, the current EU candidates, such as Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia, and the Western Balkan states, but also those happy to be outside of the EU, such as Switzerland, Norway, Iceland, 
and perhaps even former member, the UK. The community would allow a more European response to crises and could also serve as an intermediary stepping stone for those who want to join the EU. Therefore, in terms of our beautiful diagram, the political community would sit in between the Council of Europe and the European Union. So in terms of power, we would have three tiers of European integration. But what about those EU members that want to integrate further? Let's get creative and consider a fourth EU membership tier. Germany, one of the inner six members, has openly stated that they want to move to a European federation, hinting that foreign policy and defence should be managed centrally within the EU. Not to mention removing the ability for member states to veto. Going back to our diagram, the inner six would be the most integrated to the very right, with a federalised foreign policy and defence policy. Of course, they could also integrate further in terms of fiscal policy, healthcare and education. Check out my video above for more information around this. Basically, in my opinion, a multi-tier Europe is the most efficient way forward due to three reasons. Firstly, one size does not fit all. Secondly, the current EU is too slow and is hamstrung by vetoes. And thirdly, a tiered model will allow for quicker EU membership for the EU candidates. But of course, I realize that this approach makes things even more complex. But what do you think? A multi-tier EU? or not. Also, a massive shout out to all of my subscribers. You have been great with all the encouragement and support since day one. Your comments keep me going. Thank you.